Good evening, trendsetters. How are you going? Welcome to another What's for Kosher Vegan Shabbos. Um, it is Shabbos Pasha Kitetze, and we are back in lockdown with a curfew here in lovely Melbourne, Australia. So let's go without further ado, right to left. We are doing our golden brown chilber, so that's your fenugreek seed. We've, we've got a lifetime supply, and that's only a fraction, so ground that up in the magic bullet, soaking that with water, leave that overnight. Pour off any excess of water, and then I'll be good to go with, you add some harif, a bit of maybe some <clears throat> coriander, lemon juice, salt, pepper, seasoning. Grilled some uh, vegetables again. I really enjoyed them. And in the end with the eggplant, I just add a bit of lemon, uh, salt and pepper, and uh, parsley, and that's good to go. Uh, I didn't add mayonnaise. I'm such a mayonnaise fan, to be honest. And then just look at how easy this skin comes off. Okay, so you just peel that off. We've got some burgle, cracked wheat, soaked in some hot water, a pinch of salt, and that will become a tabbouli when we add some lemon juice, olive oil, and this, what I ground up in the food processor, parsley and spring onion. And then we've gone down to the shawarma store, and this is a salute to the king of shawarma stores um, called Melech Falafel, the king of falafel in Jerusalem, King George Street. Shout out, thumbs up, like, comment if you've eaten there and if you know what I'm talking about. So what we do is food pro again, lower setting, carrots, then some garlic, and then I did a bit of green chili, a uh, generous amount of salt, um, parsley, uh, lemon juice and olive oil, and a hint of ground chili powder. Mix that up together, and then this is one of my, our favorite salads. Again, it's all about the garlic. You know what? You're just gonna have to kiss each other afterwards and just enjoy each other's garlic breath, but it's worth it, you'll understand. Those who try it. Then keeping with the shawarma store vibe, I did a kind of really rustic pickled onion, just some onion, a bit of olive oil, a bit of salt, a bit of sugar, and a bit of paprika. That's kind of like a condiment. But here I wanna give a bit of an interesting insight into a lesson into a Jewish custom, which not a lot of people know about, which is we don't leave peeled onions by themselves overnight, even in a container. Um, but it's okay if you've mixed it with something or if you've left a bit of peel on it, okay? That's just a public, self, a public health announcement. And I'm, uh, I bet you weren't expecting this. Boom, let's go right here. So we're in uh, the Gemara. We're in Tractate of Nida, Masech Nida, 17a. And let's find the thing. Okay, so Amar... Here we go. Marav Shimon ben Yochai. There are five things. Hey, Dvarim. Hen she'oisa oisam mischai ben afsha. If somebody does them, they're going to endanger their life. Vadama barosha. Literally, the guy's blood is on his head. And what does he say? Ha'oichel shum kaluf. Somebody who eats peeled garlic. Ubatzal kaluf. Ubaitzak lufa. Peeled onions and peeled um, eggs. But, and then liquids that were exposed. Shavar lehem halayla. That they were exposed, left out overnight. So for whatever reason, the Gemara says that somehow some impure spirit permeates them and it's dangerous. Okay, so you can call that a superstition. In some authorities, it was put in halakha, in others it wasn't. But anyway, it's a custom and something to be aware about. And I guess the message really is, <clears throat> excuse me and my uh, cough, is that we've got to be conscious of what we're eating. And food can be our medicine and chas v'shalom can also be our opposite. So we are what we eat. Let's try and eat as healthy and ethically as possible. So anyway, moving on to that. I saw these lovely ground parsley and spring onion in the food processor. And I said, gee, I want to make a burger. I haven't done a burger in a while. Kind of a burger vibe. So I said, all right, what have I got? What have I got at home? I took two, two cans of these, four bean mix. Australia's favorite. I had some brown, uh, ground up breadcrumbs which sit in my fridge, taunt me and say, ha, 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 will you make something with me? And I said, yes, I will. Adding nooch, nutritional yeast, and a bit of miso for some umami depth, dash of soy sauce, ketchup, can't go wrong, a bit of pepper, and boom, what have we got? Klops. So klops is kind of like a Polish, if you will, meatloaf. Um, you know, old school probably would have been chicken, um, but this is four bean mix and, and uh, breadcrumbs, and also starring your ground flax seeds. So a bit of ground flax seeds, I think, helped with the binding. Dash of water, and just did that in the food pro right at the end. Obviously, after I've chopped up that, that, and whatever else I chopped up. 
And then I formed them into these clops. And then, you know, just taking inspiration from Jerry Seinfeld, black and white sesame seeds coexisting without any critical theories. So this is really good. Got the coexistence of the black and white sesame seeds on the clops for Shabbos. Then just guys, get into your mushrooms if you can. My wife finds me these amazing mushrooms all the time. Oyster mushrooms, never had an oyster, but I can tell you these have definitely got a seafood quality. And pearl mushrooms, they're divine. Then lettuce, tomatoes, hummus, and you're done. Some great bread and you're done. You're done, you're finished, it's all done. So that's it, and maybe some broccolini. Why not? You gotta make a chollet, chollet for the kids, some vegan kishka in it. Easy, happy days, so Shabbat Shalom, and I hope you're keeping well and safe and healthy and gesund, and Shabbat Shalom to all. Thanks for watching, bye.